Hey, I'm Brandon Laws, and welcome to Transform Your Workplace. Thanks for tuning in today. We've got a great episode ahead. Uh, I have a conversation with Sarah torres Ferrick. She's a human resources officer and creator of the Fun Feedback Framework. And in this episode, we talk about constructive feedback, right ways to, to give it, and we even walk through a role play and uh, go through... Uh, her particular framework, and you're going to learn a lot about uh, giving feedback. You, you know, if you're a longtime listener, you've noticed that we've done a lot of episodes on constructive feedback, and and the reality is, a lot of people, experts in this area, have uh, you know similar approaches, but you know different. And quite frankly, not everybody's good at this stuff. And so I think the more reps we get and the more we learn about this area, you're going to figure out your right approach and then be able to take it back to your team and, and manage people. And especially with times like this where we're managing remote, it's challenging. And so I think the more you learn about this, uh, the better it's going to be for you. So uh, you're going to love this. Sarah's a speaker, blogger. She's got great content on hrcircleonline.com where you can find more about her. Uh, enjoy the episode and um, we got lots of good stuff, great stuff coming. Um, I mean, I've got material recorded for the next few months. I mean, I've been podcasting quite a bit during quarantine time and I think you're really going to love uh, what's to come. So enjoy. Let me know what you think. Reach out to me on LinkedIn, Instagram, wherever. Uh, love to hear from you. And I want to know how you're doing too. Like, are you going stir crazy? What do you want to hear too? So enjoy the episode. Hey, Sarah, it's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Thanks, Brandon. I'm happy to be here. I love this conversation we're about to have about constructive feedback. I think we can all get better at it. People aren't really that comfortable with it. Do you ever find yourself in a situation where, or maybe in the past, I mean, you're probably an expert at it now, but do you ever find yourself in a situation where you needed to give constructive feedback, but didn't really know how to go about it? I imagine a lot of people ask that question or have that thought in their mind, like, I just don't even know where to start. That's definitely happened to me. And it's a little funny because I was doing HR for a while before I became a supervisor myself. And I specialize in labor and employee relations. So I was giving people advice for probably four years about how to do this. And then I became a supervisor and I was like, wow, it's a lot harder <laughs> on yeah. this side. I think the worst feedback experience I had, because I'm kind of generally, you know, I like labor relations, I like negotiating with unions. So I kind of like that side. So that's given me like a leg up from most people. But I had this employee who I knew for a long time, you know, he's in the HR community, he was an expert, a lot of fields, I brought him over to where I was. And he just wasn't performing. And I think, you know, when he was remote working, he wasn't actually working, but he was you know, putting on his time card is that he was working. Mm. So I really had to have a conversation with him. But he had just gotten a DUI. And he had told me that he had to take leave because he had some service connected psychological issues he was dealing with. And then his wife cheated on him and he was getting a divorce. Mm. So I was like, Oh, I kind of want to be nice, Sarah. Life's going to be great, Sarah. So that was really hard for me to be able to navigate what is the proper time yeah. to have this conversation because the business does matter, but so does, you know, the human being. That was really the toughest time. So I had to figure out what was the proper timing and then how I can both be empathetic to him as well as, you know, empathetic mm -hmm. to the business and the business mission. Yeah, it does seem like the timing is like the most critical part of it taking into account everybody's going through something at any given point. And it's like, when's the most appropriate time to have these kind of conversations? Because what if you're not privy to what's going on, and then you drop some feedback at the wrong moment, and just everything unravels? It's like almost like you wouldn't even care about the person, or at least that's how it come across. So what have you figured out about the timing of these kind of conversations? 
So I think that the quickest is the best and the most casual is the best. So like Mm. for that situation, it was much easier if it was like right when something happened that I just mentioned it because then to him, it didn't feel like going to the principal's office moment, you know, and you're like sitting in the hallway. Like it didn't feel like that to him. One time we were on a conference call and we were having an issue with drug testing for one of the locations. It was clear from the call that he didn't do something that he needed to do. I decided, well, we're going to take a pause. You know, we're going to take a break from this conference call. And he was actually in the office with me and we were private. You know, we took a break in the conference call, put it on mute. And then I just turned to him and started that conversation of what happened. Tell me what happened. And that turned into the feedback conversation. And that was really effective as opposed to when I remembered something that happened, maybe even from the morning, the afternoon or a couple of days, and then I scheduled a meeting to talk to him. That's when it really didn't work. Yeah, it's interesting because you, instead of waiting a couple of days, you got to address it right away. It sounds like you posed a question to him, like, what happened here? And like, let him talk through it. And then it gives you kind of an end to kind of walk through like, okay, well, here's what I'm seeing, right? Is that how you spun it a little bit? Exactly. So I think a big tip here is to concentrate on the thing that happened wrong. So like the report that was wrong, the event that was wrong. So in this scenario, I never really talked about like to him, why didn't you do that? You know, what's wrong Mm -hmm. with you that you didn't get this done? It was more like, hey, we have an objective. We need to get these drug tests done. They didn't get done. What was the obstacle? How do we fix the obstacle? So removing that from, you know, the employee, I found really helpful. Yeah, it does seem like the you statements feel like attacking in a way. And it becomes about the person. It's almost like a personal vendetta, you know, versus like, here's the objective we're all trying to reach. And this isn't working. Something needs to be corrected. Exactly. And I think also being specific. So oftentimes, you know, when you're the manager, The thought that you have is really, oh, this person is lazy. This person, you know, doesn't understand. This person lacks attention to detail. That's a big one we see, you know, in the HR community. This person lacks attention to detail. Having a constructive feedback conversation around that is never going to be effective because the person is just going to get defensive. So it's really, it's not about Sarah who lacks attention to detail. It's about the report that Sarah did that had XYZ error on it. So making sure you're talking about that error. How do we get better at giving feedback to other people? I imagine it's like a muscle, you know, if you don't use it, it's not going to be easy for you. But if you use it over time, you just kind of strengthen it and you get better at these conversations and to help support people. It's one of the biggest things in the workplace that people need to be doing. They're not great at it. But imagine how great a workplace could be if our supervisors, managers, and peers were all great at giving constructive feedback. Oh, yeah. I might be out of a job, though, but that would be great. I'd be happy to retire. (laughs) I think practice. And so what I think you should do as a leader is practice publicly giving feedback to yourself. So like whenever I made a mistake as a leader, I thought it was a wonderful opportunity because then I got to display to my team how I can be constructive to myself and how it was okay. So taking those opportunities when you do make a mistake to leverage it about, hey, how are we having this conversation? And the same type of conversation, the same way you characterize the mistake you made is how you characterize the conversation with the employee. I've also found that it's helpful to practice it. So I think that if you're a leader, you need to know who your HR support is And you can go to your HR support and kind of practice and talk it out, right? Because a lot of times the employee is going to say something that's going to put you off. You know, they might cry, they might get angry, but it's more likely that they're going to maybe deflect or even, you know, put the blame back on you. And sometimes that's valid and sometimes it's not, but our natural reaction is kind of that fight, flight, or freeze. And so you don't want to do that. So if you're practicing with your, you know, HR business partner, your HR consultant, that person can help you walk through those. So you can practice, you know, mentally being able to know how you're feeling, 
digest it and move past it quickly because you don't want to have those emotional reactions when you're having that conversation. So how do we practice? Do you have a framework, a methodology around constructive feedback that you recommend people follow? Yeah, so I like to think about fun. So F-U-N. You know, when I work with managers, I have them think about first, you're going to frame the discussion. So that means you're thinking of yourself as, you know, the person making the guardrails, right? Or putting those like rumble strips in the road. You don't want the cars to go past these rumble strips. And when they do, you're going to make them rumble. That's your constructive feedback. And then they're going to get back online. So your job is, okay, you're going to start the conversation by framing it. What was that specific thing that we're talking about? What's the specific problem that we need to talk about? And then throughout the conversation, it's your job to steer us back within those kind of rumble strips or those guardrails on the road. The you is understand. And that's the bulk of the conversation should be you trying to figure out what happened. So that's a lot of open-ended questions and listening. There should be more listening less talking when you're the one giving the feedback. And hopefully through the part of you understanding, you can ask clarifying questions. You can even ask questions to bring the employee back into alignment. So it might be that they didn't think it mattered about a due date. So then when you're getting the information about they just decided when they prioritize their work that that report being due on Monday morning didn't matter as much as something else. So you can bring it in, educate them on why it matters, and then you can start getting their buy-in, right? You can see like, oh, I see why that's wrong. I see why, you know, the C-suite needed this. I can see why, you know, the client needed a response. I can see the client's perspective that that might have been a rude email, right? And then the end means next steps. You're hoping that through this conversation of learning from the employee, getting the information, that there can be, you know, a commitment moving forward. And so I always have to have my managers practice not being the solver. So it's going to be more effective for future performance if the employee comes up with the solution. So, you know, the managers are going to have ideas because that's why they're managers. So I want them to resist saying, okay, well, I think this is how we can solve the problem. I want them to say something like, well, how can we prevent X, Y, Z from happening in the future? And ideally, the employee is going to come up with a solution that the manager likes. Then the parties can kind of commit to that. You might have to kind of go back and forth with the employee sometimes before you get that commitment. But ideally, you can commit to something, you end the meeting with, this is how we're moving forward, and then you follow up. So I think what's helpful is having that person you can trust. Ideally, it's your you know HR business partner, your HR consultant, and you can have them play the employee and you can kind of go through things. And then that person can tell you, hey, your nonverbal language is making me feel this way. Or they can also throw out some of those possibly triggering things. So then you can practice how to react to them. Hey, Brandon here taking a quick break to tell you that this episode of Transform Your Workplace is sponsored by Tresta. Tresta is a mobile app that lets you do business calling and texting from anywhere. With Tresta, you can set up your business phone number, download the app, and start calling and texting unlimited right away. Tresta is the best business phone app on the market. Growing your business is all about networking and communication, so it's important that you're available. If you've been carrying around a second smartphone, your chain to your desk phone, or worse, and giving out your personal number to anybody that you do business with, then you should give this a try. Tresta offers the call management features that empower you to communicate smarter and more efficiently, like auto attendance, call recording, user groups, and more. And you don't need any special equipment, just a smartphone you're already using. Tresta is easy to configure so you can set up everything yourself all online. Tresta is just $15 per user per month with no contract. So start your free 30-day trial today at tresta.com forward slash transform. That's www.tresta.com slash transform. Now back to the show. Can we do a role play? (laughs) Sure. So here's the scenario. You're going to give me feedback. Okay. Let's say we're in meetings together. We're part of the same team. We've got a bunch of team members, part of a meeting, department meeting, let's say. 
and I talk over people on a regular basis and it's frustrating other people. So you as my manager need to give me constructive feedback. Go. <laughs> We're going to pretend like the meeting happened yesterday or this is... Let's do is right after the meeting. We just had the meeting. I was maybe talking over a couple team members and this has already come up in the past, but it's time to address it. I'm your employee. Hey, Brandon, how did you think that meeting went? Oh, I thought it was great. I was really excited about everything. I can't wait to move forward on our progress that we've made. Awesome. What did you think Sally and Johnny thought of your contributions? I hope they were really into my ideas. It seemed like they were kind of going along with it. I'm curious what you think. I thought maybe they had a little bit more to say and maybe the structure of the meeting, how it was happening, didn't really let them express themselves. What do you think? I guess I didn't really think of it that way. I don't know. I just, I was so excited. I felt like they were aligned with me that I didn't even think to let them talk. Oh, I see. So I know that you mentioned when we were having our monthly meeting that you really hope to run a marketing department. Do you mind if we talk a little bit and maybe I can give you some mentoring advice about how you can reach those career goals? Absolutely. I mean, I definitely want to reach my career goals. So I'd love to talk about it. Oh, that's wonderful. So I think your contributions today were fantastic. Your technical expertise has really benefited the company in XYZ way. I think, you know, thinking about this meeting today, maybe what you can do to just step up your expertise a little bit more is trying to practice maybe trying to get more input before you provide your expertise. What do you think about that? That's totally reasonable. Let's do it. So how do you think we could do that if we had this meeting again? Maybe I'll sit back a little bit and let the others talk. I want to hear their ideas too, and maybe we can build off of each other. So I'll definitely pay more attention to how I'm approaching the conversation. Is there anything I could help you with? You know, I appreciate you coming forward with it. Maybe if this happens again, definitely point it out. I'm open to hearing any feedback you have. Oh, definitely. I will. And if you ever, you know, I know we have a meeting next Thursday. So if maybe you want to chat Thursday morning or Wednesday afternoon, we can kind of go over the game plan. So we're really showcasing you as that marketing leader that I know that you can be. Yeah, I'd love that. That'd be great. Oh, wonderful. Cool. So what happens with that role play? Obviously, that goes through a scenario where there's alignment, the other person doesn't react in a poor way. But what happens if there's not alignment? And, you know, the other person is defensive and all those things that I wasn't during that role play. Right, exactly. So a big thing that they're going to have is they might blame it back on you. So they might say, well, you didn't tell me to do that. How was I supposed to know that? Right? So what the leader has to do is If somebody's being unprofessional, we always need to address that unprofessionalism, right? That's always first. If they're being unprofessional, we kind of cut the feedback conversation objective that we thought we had. And now we're addressing the unprofessionalism. But assuming that they're kind of snapping back, but it's not at that unprofessional realm, then what you want to do is you want to internally and very quickly think about is there merit to that? So say if my employee came back to me and said, well, the report was late because I had a question and you weren't around, I might feel defensive. Like, what are you talking about? I'm a great leader. I do a lot for this company. How dare (laughs) you say that, right? Mm -hmm. But I need to take a step back and think, oh, I did have a lot of meetings. We just had our compensation panels going on. So if I thought there was merit, then I should go back and try to mirror that positive communication. You could say something like, oh, I'm so sorry. I never meant for you to think that I wasn't here for you. How can I help you better in the future? And then now we can go back, bring it into the solution minded. If I have that reflection, I'm like, that's just not true. Then you can kind of bring it back. And this also works if they're deflecting on a cowork. And you can say, okay, I'm always here for you. But right now we need to talk about this report being late and what you could do to prevent this from happening in the future. So it's a lot of that. Remember like the F in fun, you're framing it. So you just have to bring it back in alignment. So that's kind of where it's snapping back. They're not in alignment, but they're not at that unprofessional scenario. If they do get to that unprofessional scenario, even like sometimes they start crying and they're getting really emotional, not in a 
unprofessional mm-hmm. manner, but an unproductive manner, then you kind of need to end the conversation. When you do great feedback, either you're going to get employees to do better or you're going to realize the employees that shouldn't be with your company. That's a good point. I like how you ended the role play with like the next steps. Like, hey, can we connect next Thursday and discuss this? You know, do you recommend that as a good kind of follow up action item when you're giving feedback, like set a meeting for a couple of days down the road? Or how do you like to do the follow ups? Yeah, there should always be follow up. So first, there should always be some kind of action in your solution. In our pretend role play, we talked about acting in a meeting. So then we need an action about, hey, let's talk about that before. Or it could be you're going to get some kind of education to help you. Something is happening. So you always need to have a follow-up. So I like to make sure there's at least two follow-ups. So the first follow-up should just be like you go back to your desk. And I'm assuming we're in like a more white-collar environment. You could write an upbeat email to the employee where you're just like, thanks for meeting with me today. I thought we made a lot of progress. I just wanted to recap what we talked about. Then you can provide a short summary and then you can end it with something inspirational. So you might say, like to you, I might end it as, I'm really looking forward to meeting with you. I looked at my calendar. I'm free Wednesday at 1.30. Please meet in my office. I'm excited to help you improve on XYZ. And so you would end that there. But then you would have the next feedback where we would do the action, which is kind of meeting about it. And then we would have the meeting where I would see if you improved. And then I would have another follow up session where kind of I would say, hey, let's chat about how that meeting went. And then you would talk about, hey, this is what we talked about before. This is what we committed together to do. How do you think that's working out? This is how I think it's working out and kind of go from there. And it could be a couple follow-up sessions that you have to do to really resolve the issue. Do you recommend incorporating this, like the feedback portion of it, and especially the follow-ups into some, in like an annual performance review in some way? Because I know a lot of managers and HR people, they're like, okay, we're going to still do the annual review. And a lot of people wait to give all the feedback at that one time. But I'm wondering if there's a way to incorporate some of the feedback you've been giving throughout the year to make sure that you're sort of, you know, making sure that the employee has reached those marks, those outcomes that you're looking for when providing the feedback in the moment. Right. I have like a love-hate relationship with annual performance reviews. Same here. (laughs) So I think from a feedback scenario, the feedback is not helpful if you're just like once a year writing a page about how awesome or not awesome the employee is. Like that doesn't matter. The employee is not paying attention. They're like, am I getting a raise? Am I getting a bonus? Am I getting a raise? Is she being mean? She's ridiculous. I'm going to file something because she doesn't like me, right? It's not effective. And you need to do the feedback as close to the action requiring the feedback as possible, depending on what, you know, formal performance system your company has and whether it's tied to a compensation, you might still have to, you know, have that annual performance, but you cannot use the annual performance as a way to address, you know, performance deficiencies or performance gaps. It's not going to be that tool. What's something like people get absolutely wrong about giving constructive feedback? Like something you just hear over and over again is like, oh, why did you do that? So the biggest one we talked about, and that's not being specific, using those generalizations like, oh, I want to help you have better attention to detail. I want to improve your customer service. So those kind of generalities that really talk about a person's characteristics, that's a big and common no-no. The other one that drives me bonkers is the, it's not personal, it's business. Well, it's all personal because we're all people. Yep. And you know, you're in a feedback session and there's a inherent power imbalance, you being the boss. And so they're thinking, if I do something wrong, am I going to get fired? It's always personal because we're people. And so we need to get out of seeing that. And anytime a manager says that, the employee's just going to shut off. And either you had a good employee who just needs some guidance that's going to leave you, or you have a good employee that's going to stay there and be unengaged and detrimental to the morale of your entire workforce. 
I love it. This is good stuff. And thanks for walking through the scenario with me too. I think that was pretty helpful to illustrate like how the framework could actually work in an actual scenario. What other things did we miss about constructive feedback that you like to incorporate and that you think would be helpful for listeners? I think the biggest thing to remember is it only works if you do positive feedback. Spend most of your time doing positive feedback. And I don't mean you just email your employees thank you every time they do something right. I mean, you have really robust thank yous. You think about a recognition program within your company. You make a, I like to call it a recognition rich culture where you're having peer recognition, top down recognition. And only if you have that set up, can you really make the most of the constructive feedback? Nobody likes if, you know, that friend or that so-called friend that only complains to you, right? That only tells you everything you're doing wrong. Yeah. That's the biggest takeaway. I like that too, because I think where you're kind of even going with that, and I'll take it a step further, is like reinforcing the behaviors that you want. It gets people to do more of it. If I said, here's an example of bad constructive feedback. Sarah, you're awesome. Everything you touch is awesome. Versus if you said like, Sarah, the way you showed up to today's meeting and treated the client or you showed up on time, you were super professional or you killed it in that meeting. Like something really specific, then it's like, wow, I want to do more of that, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, Sarah, thanks for coming on the podcast. Where can people learn more about you and what you're up to and just anything that you want to you know, show people to? Well, I would love to connect on LinkedIn. That's a great place to connect with me. I'm Sarah Torres Farrick. I'm the only Torres Farrick <laughs> on there. I'd love to talk to everybody there. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. Thanks so much, Brandon. 